This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Get the cost reduced and get the power consumption reduced. Getting the, this whole thing to work um, on USB bus power is a challenge. Um, so this is USB 2? This is USB 2. Yeah, high speed USB 2. So, so 5 volts, you got a, you got an amp. 5 volts, I've got uh, I've got half an amp at 5 volts. Ah, that's, I, that's, it, that's the spec. <laughs> <laughs> no one follows the spec. Right, well, hopefully I'll be following the spec. Okay. I'm, I might have to fudge it a little bit, yeah. we'll see. You can get the dual cable. I mean, <laughs> if I have to, yeah. 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 So that's what this board is. It's pretty much just a microcontroller board. It has a little bit of, of programmable logic. Just, so that's this guy here? Yep. Just enough to talk to the ADC DAC, not enough to do any digital signal processing. Okay, so your ADC, your your analog digital converter mm -hmm. and your digital analog converter, the things that it's allowing you to take RF, which is you know mm -hmm. in the air as analog, and then turn it into bits that our computer can understand, and vice versa, so we can transmit. Right. Where is that? That's this little guy right here. Ah, the purple guy. Yeah, this board is called Lemon Drop. Uh -huh. And uh, this so a jelly bean and a lemon drop. Yep. Is and and is there a Kahlua involved in this Not or yet. some gin? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll see how the project goes. Okay. I <laughs> uh, there might have been some gin involved at one point. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I see some of the traces where that guy, was <laughs> an influence. <laughs> this guy uh, has the the ADC to DAC, and it also has this wireless transceiver chip on it. So this chip right here is what's mm -hmm. doing all of your wireless transmit and receive. Yeah. Yep. And it's uh, it's a nice little part that that basically this whole setup, what you're holding in your hand, is a USB peripheral that for doing software radio transmit and receive from 2.3 gigahertz to 2.7 gigahertz. So That's what this little chip gives me is 2.3 to 2.7. So similar to like say the Ubertooth and that 2.4 mm -hmm. and that being 2.400 to 2.48. Three, right. eight, seven, whatever. Yeah. So you've got a little bit wider bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Why two, three to two, seven? Just because I really like this transceiver IC. It has a lot of great features in a small package at a, at a low price, and perhaps most importantly, at a low power consumption. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm taking advantage of that in my design, that one part. And the next step is another little board I have called Lollipop, which I don't I didn't bring with me, but it actually converts that 2.4-ish frequency uh, to a much wider range. And we're, we're targeting 100 megahertz to 6 gigahertz. We may end up getting, we'll probably end up getting lower than 100 megahertz. Uh, hopefully we'll go to 6, 6 gig, but at the very least we're going to get up into the so know, So gigahertz. you're saying that this would have another daughter board mm -hmm. that would say, if I wanted to sniff uh, 25 megahertz. It would sniff 25 megahertz and then will upconvert that. Yes. So that this right. uh, signal processor there can can understand it. Right. It'll upconvert it if it's a low frequency, or or it'll downconvert a higher frequency down to the two point. Can you downconvert? Yep. Absolutely. I think you yep. can downconvert. You, you can upconvert or downconvert. Send convert. it faster. Like how <laughs> how does that work? <laughs> when you well, take like uh, you know. Actually, it's kind of interesting. Um, an RF mixer. Mm -hmm. The way it works essentially is it takes a, an incoming signal, like a sine wave, mm -hmm. and then it, it chops it up by inverting it over and over and over again at a different So like frequency. pulse amplitude modulation? So, well, it sort of ends up modulating it, basically. Um, but what happens if you, if you do the math and figure out like, okay, you run a sine wave with, with frequency 100 megahertz, and then you, you chop it up and invert it um, at a rate of say 200 megahertz, um, well then the, um, the, the resulting frequency that you get out of that is actually both the sum and difference of the two. So, so you're simultaneously up converting and down converting. Uh -huh. And typically what you do in this kind of an application is you do just that. You simultaneously up convert and down convert and then you just filter out the side that you don't want. So, <laughs> But do you not lose the resolution? Do you not lose like half the data when you do that? You lose half the power. You lose half the signal power. Okay. Yes. Uh, but this is commonplace in RF design. And uh, we could geek out about. We could, <laughs> oh, yeah. we could break out the whiteboard pen and geek out about <laughs> could, that for quite a while. Huh? Yeah. That's yeah. fascinating. So it, everything gets up or down converted to two point four ish around mm -hmm. that neighborhood, so right. that you can deal with that. And all of this package basically allows you to. So you would be able to out of the USB port get whatever's coming in raw. I right. assume with the right software, get that right into Wireshark, Kismet, whatever it may be. Sure. Uh, and there will be a lot of you know, software development required at that point. What, what I'm trying to provide with this is an interface into GNU Radio. And GNU Radio is a, a um, framework 
for developing software radio applications. Yeah, like isn't OpenBTS based on that? It is. It and is. so that's the one that's the open base station that you can use to develop your own GSM tower. Right. So that's which is fun for either deploying your own GSM network within your co corporation or even spoofing GSM networks. Absolutely. Right. So this is. Uh, Could this do that? It should be able to. Yeah. Uh, I haven't actually gotten that far that I can try that out, but. My goal is to provide a platform that you could run just about any GNU radio application um, with, and that, that would include OpenPTS. Wow, that is fascinating. I can't wait to, to see how uh, this continues to develop. Uh, it's definitely piquing my interest now. Thanks. Um, what else is new with Great Sky Gadgets? A lot is new with Great Sky Gadgets. Yeah. I mean, that's the project that's keeping me really busy this year. Um, but uh, some of your viewers have probably seen that we have the, the uh, Throwing Star Lantap Pro. Ah, the that one that doesn't with. poke an eyeball out. So well, unlike these guys, it's harder to poke an eyeball out with it, yes. So it comes in this pretty little box, and it has the instructions on the back. Um, and um, the, um, the device... Yeah is in a nice plastic enclosure here. So it's ready to go out of the box. You just plug no it soldering into necessary. your network. No soldering necessary. Uh, so it's a little less ninja than you know soldering your yeah, own. But, but sometimes when you're walking up into the DoD to do a thing, you don't need a throwing star. Right. And sometimes you want a device that actually uh, doesn't stand out so much when mm -hmm. somebody spots it in the network closet. Oh. You know what? You're right. I think the uh, the throwing star is just a bit conspicuous. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Unlike this guy, which is totally legit. <laughs> Dude, that right. is wicked. Right. Well, uh, what what yeah. else is happening? I mean, like like again, the uh, Great Sky Edge is awesome things happening. You're we're working with Mike Krishan on, on the uh, the Kisby. You've got the Hack RF, the uh, the throwing star, the Pro now, and right. the Ubertooth, of course. The What's the big news with the Ubertooth? Well, I do have some big news for the Ubertooth, and it is that. Um, uh, I'm actually taking on a full-time developer, uh, Dominic Spill, who I mentioned earlier, who has been a part of my Bluetooth research from day one, uh, before I even... Hacking together the $2,000 with oh, yeah. USRPs and Bluetooth. Yeah, before I even conceived of Ubertooth One, um, the work that I did on Bluetooth that kind of set up this project was all done with Dominic, and he's been a big supporter of mine over the years. He's contributed code to the Ubertooth project, um, he's been a, a great help to me and a, a great volunteer over the years. And uh, so now I'm finally able, uh, starting in July, to have uh, uh, Dominic be the full-time lead Ubertooth developer, which is terrific because there are were, there were a lot of interesting features and capabilities that uh, haven't yet been developed but could be for mm -hmm. the Ubertooth. It's a, it's a solid hardware platform that could do so much more than it does now. And with Dominic's help, uh, we're going to make that happen. Nice. Yeah, I know how that goes. I mean, you're like you're a visionary. You you've got an awesome thing going, and you need the support of that. And I'm just really stoked that like when we first met and you were first launching this, you know, we could be like a small part, you know, with the hack shop and whatnot, helping out so that you know more brilliant, insane stuff starts coming out of your mind. And uh, so that's so fantastic that Dominic's coming on board, and I'm I'm going to be on the mailing list, uh, waiting for good stuff. All right. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. If you're setting up a website or starting a new business, showcasing your portfolio or publishing your blog, Domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to register a new domain, consider getting a .com. A .com name is the original. We all know it's the best. It's globally understood and immediately gives credibility to your website no matter what name you choose. Plus, if you want to invest in and sell domains, .coms have the highest aftermarket value. Find new domains at Domain.com. Shannon and I love Domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, and easy to use. Plus, Domain.com's social networking presence is huge on Twitter, at Domain.com. They've got great customer support, and that makes it really a fun place to do business. So get this, the guys over at Domain.com want to hook up our fans with an awesome offer. Get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code HAK5 at Domain.com checkout. That's 15% off and big savings. Don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5 when you think domain names, think Domain.com.
Hello and welcome to the end of the show. The where end we of the show. The end of the show. But first, we have feedback. Oh, we do. Yes. Right. Actually, we love it when you guys, especially you guys, you sysadmins in the crowd, they're like, dude, the module with the thing and integration and the. So we got a couple of those good ones talking in re reference to our Kerberos kind of Active Directory ah, LDAP that's discussion. Right. You guys know how I feel about LDAP. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know all the words that come out of your mouth about LDAP. Anyway. That Paul bleeps. So Robert sent in, in response to the question Ben posed, I have found and used Likewise Open, which is now called Power Broker Open, to add Linux servers to Active Directory and to authenticate users. It makes Linux AD extremely easy. I like that. It just yeah. like, boom, your server shows up in the tree. And it's called open. It's been so long since I've done Active Directory. Not so long, just a couple of years, but yeah. thank God, too. <laughs> I mean, Glad it's, you're no, not using it's, it anymore. it's better than LDAP. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. OK, so the next one comes from Dana. Dana writes, just saw a recent episode of Hack 5 where there was a discussion about hacking open LDAP to authenticate to Active Directory. I have a simpler solution that we use that is clean, robust, and stable. Consider using PAM Radius for login and SSHD and point it to the network policy server, the MPS on Windows Server 2008 and newer, or Internet Authentication Server, IAS, on Windows Server 2003. You can then push policy decision to that auth authentication engine through the connection request and resource request policies within Windows to drive auth on Linux. Dude, that is so sweet. You can auth with Windows for your Linux. I, though, it kind of feels a little dirty to be <laughs> authorizing it? with Windows to get into your Linux, but it's through Radius at least. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes forget about Radius. It's super, super Never cool. Used Radius. Well, here's the thing we're used to doing authentication, say, like on our wireless network with right. like WPA, TAC, PSK, mm -hmm. pre shared key. We've yes, talked about yeah. symmetric ciphers and all that fun stuff. Well, there's another way to do it, and the enterprise way is to use Radius. And we should definitely do like a Radius LDAP mm. Wi-Fi segment I see because a segment coming yeah, out. there's there's good stuff that That'd you can do fun. with that. Cool. Yeah. Well, coming Thanks up soon. Thanks for sending that in. I hope that helps yes. somebody out there that's like, oh, I really want to get Linux into the environment, but we're a Windows shop and the body blah, blah, blah <laughs> you know, been there. Yes, it's always helpful to get your viewer feedback, especially whenever we have an open question on the show at the end of like the last episode. And you can always email us over at feedback at hack5.org to put in your input. Yay! Yay! Let's find out about the Technos Photo of the Week. Yes. So this one is from AnthroUnit or AnthroNit, mm -hmm. uh, depending on how you say that. I said it both ways, just in case. Thought you might wa want to see my Wi-Fi dish made from a converted satellite dish. This is so cool. A tripod base from some shop lights, some custom stickers, a uh, bi-quad antenna, and an Edimax EW7318 USG with a USB extension cord running down the arm of the to the back of the dish to the laptop. That's that's, that's, that's awesome. pretty cool. Yeah. I've actually really been getting into this point-to-point -point Wi-Fi crazy antenna yeah, stuff. I like yeah, these. Well, yeah, you're right. I got, I got this. We're going to be yeah. talking more about this a little bit later. This is a 2.4 gig parabolic guy that um, that's good actually times. after the interview <laughs> was geeking out with um, with uh, uh, Mike with Osmond my, yeah. about it because of course 2.4. You know that's what uh, the Uber Tooth runs in addition to our fun yeah. Wi-Fi stuff. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. I have never, okay, so I've seen people doing like dish antenna Wi-Fi things, yeah. but from what I understand, they're not the same frequency. So maybe some hams or other such RF-minded people could email us at feedback at hack5.org. Maybe even show us your crazy rigs. I love seeing people's, especially those ridiculous outdoor oh, yeah, uh, Wi-Fi grids this and is stuff. The best. Send those to us. They're like, I'm talking to the aliens. Hey. So you can send your TechnoLess feed uh, uh, Technolist photos to feedback at hack5.org and make sure to put in the subject line Technolist so that we can point it out pretty easily. So last week's trivia question was using a strobe to illuminate a subject while keeping the background properly exposed is a technique known as what? Hang on, I'm, I'm texting Ryan Connolly. <laughs> uh, what is it? You know it. Fill flash. Oh, see I don't do a lot of still fill photos flash. and when I do I use like a continuous fill. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. But. All right, so this week's trivia question is convert 11100 from, oh. from binary to hexadecimal. What? That's it? Really? You want me to do yeah. this right now? 11100? <laughs> no, don't okay, do okay. it. Okay, all right. 
let them Google it. Okay. <laughs> well, we should probably get back to our game of Hangman anyway. Okay. Well, you Actually, guys can answer at hack5.org slash trivia if you want to try to win some swag. Nice. Well, until next time, um, I'm Darren Kitchen. She's Shannon Morris. We would like to remind you to heck, head over to hakshop.com if you like what you see and support us directly. Yes. And uh, like you we said about feedback. You can check out hack5.org slash follow to find out all the social networking and all the stuff that we're doing, mm -hmm. all the conventions that are coming up, especially. Oh, yeah. Lots of good ones. And uh, with all of that said, um, trust your technologist. Peace. What do we got here? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, uh, you've got you got two more letters. You got an arm and, and another arm. Uh, you no, already, said I already said H. Um, S. No, I already said S. Crap. Uh, I. Mm mm. It's not, it's not I. One left. F. Yeah. <gasps> actually, yes. actually, it's an F. Okay. Uh. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh. Uh -huh. RM uh -huh. Tech RF Bam forward slash. Or is it a backslash? Don't confuse me like this. <laughs> I use both. God! <laughs> 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 <laughs>